Good morning. It is January the 23rd, <clears throat> 2023. We did not get a video made yesterday. Started several times, but we never got it accomplished. We were having a very big rainstorm all day yesterday. It rained and it rained and it rained. Heavy rain. Then it would slack off and then it would rain again. So we were kind of running back and forth taking care of our animals and trying to get make sure that the vulnerable ones had a, a shelter to get under. And it's a beautiful day now in South Georgia today. It's beautiful. The rain has stopped. There's not a cloud in the sky. Uh, we're having to wear our boots today and we're going to go around and do some stuff this morning pertaining to the animals and got a couple of ditches we need to dig around the barn so that the next time the water won't, won't run up into the, into the stalls where the animals stay. Several things we have to do. Sitting here looking at the gardenia bush. Okay, I'm going to shoot a little bit, and then I'm going to... I said it was a gardenia. It's not a gardenia. This is a camellia. We also have some beautiful gardenias behind the house that we need to show you. All right, so let's uh, get over here and shoot olive oil just a little bit. I'm going to... Uh, you don't have a ruler, do you? I'm going to check the brace height of the of olive oil this morning and it's about as close to seven and a half as you can get without uh, you know getting right down to the micro world all right didn't get to shoot olive oil yesterday that's another thing that did not happen. See if I can concentrate. And I am thinking of what I'm going to talk about this morning. And I hope that the words that the Spirit leads me to say will be useful <clears throat> to some people out there that might stumble across my YouTube channel. I'll take that as a hit right there. First shot is a hit. It's gonna be 32 degrees in the morning. It's about 40 right now and it's a little on the chilly side. you something that did occur to me to talk about. I hope it's the spirit that's leading me to say that. Missed that one. Down here in South Georgia, I want you to know that I was born down here in a town about six miles away from here. I didn't have anything to do with that. My dad was a, an electrical engineer. And we traveled around a bit. We moved to Albany, Georgia one time. When I was in the first grade, moved to Massachusetts. When I was in the second and third grade, to a place called Holliston, Massachusetts. And then we moved to Huntsville, Alabama. 
they call it the Rocket City, where they developed a lot of the components of the space program and then move back home. We always called it home. Back to South Georgia when I was in the 11th grade in high school. I've been not been a great traveler, but I have traveled when I was in college. Got to befriending some guys from South Central America, Nicaragua. Nicaragua, they say. Travel down there for a couple of weeks. Been to Mexico a couple of times. Been out west as far as New Mexico. In a car trip. But what I wanted to talk about today was everybody has a place that they call home. I knew a guy one time from down here and all he talked about was moving to a better place. Matter of fact, he wanted to move out west. If only I could go out west. One time he actually picked up and went out west. I forgot where. New Mexico, Colorado, I forgot. Stayed out there about six months. And he was just as miserable out there as he was back here. The miserable guy. My point is this, if you're one of those people out there that's thinking, if I could only move, you're up in New York, Pennsylvania, wherever, Minnesota, Ohio, if I could only move to Florida. I don't think you're going to be happier in Florida. If you're not happy, you're not happy. Now there could be a reason, a legitimate reason where you ha why you have to move, you know. But not happiness. Happiness is not where you are. Happiness has nothing to do with your physical location on earth. pull this thing on back my fingers feeling a little better I'm gonna pull it way on back as far as I can pull it just for the pure joy of seeing what I can do pull it pull it that was fun now the other thing that I am doing these videos for is I've been commanded to declare the name of Yeshua the Messiah also known as Jesus Christ before men and that's why I'm doing it I don't guess me sitting here shooting a bow and arrow is a great entertainment for anybody but it gives me something to do which I like to do while I talk about Yeshua Jesus I'm just not out just decide to do this. Jesus commanded those that believed in him to declare his name before men. It's a commandment. He didn't say do it if you like it. Oh, if you think it'll be fun, do it. He didn't say anything like that. If you declare my name before men, I will declare your name before the Father. And he also said, if you deny my name before men, I will deny your name. So I'm doing it because he told me to do it. I guess I could think of some other stuff to do besides this. I do enjoy it, but it puts me out a little bit on a limb. 
try to come up, get up every day and sit in there and say the same thing. That's not my problem. He didn't say, say it once or twice and then go about your business. He said, declare my name. So I expect to be declaring his name one way or another on the day that I die. The last thing that I, breath that I believe, uh, that I take, I hope that I'm going to be declaring the name of Yeshua the Messiah, the Savior of the world, before men. Now if I'm targeting some people out there known as the lost sheep, they actually, or you actually belong to Yeshua the Messiah. He intends to give you eternal life one way or another. And he uses the other sheep to call them. I'm calling. It's like animals call each other and get herded together. This analogy of lost sheep is a way of explaining people that have gotten and gone astray. And they're desperately wanting to come back but they just don't know it yet or don't know how to do it or they're miserable they haven't reached their bottom uh, they haven't reached the bottom yet which re is required now there are people that come to Jesus that haven't done any particularly horrible stuff they've all sinned but most people have gotten down that road of denying God, denying Jesus, and it's a not a fun place to be. All kind of things have happened. They're not happy. Happiness is there in believing in Him. It has nothing to do with where you live, whether you live in New Mexico, California, Mongolia, it doesn't make any difference where you live. I'm calling you lost sheep out there. I'm calling you because I was told to do it. I'm calling you. Come. Jesus wants you to come. I think most of the people out there know enough about it that they don't need to be instructed. Some of you do need to be instructed in exactly who Jesus is and all that. But you got preachers out there all over the place doing that. I'm going to let them do that. My job is to call you. They've laid the foundation, I hope. Preachers out there all over the place telling you. They've laid the foundation in your mind. I'm calling you. Come. How do you come? You just say, yes. I'm a sinner. I can see it now. I've been my own Lord. I've been my own God. I've denied you. I haven't believed you. I've made a mess of my life. I'm going to quit doing those things to the best of my ability. Make up my mind I'm going to quit. And I'm going to come and do it your way, which is believing in you. Knock and the door will be open to you. Knock on that door. Knock on the door and he'll open the door. And you can come in and you can have rest and you can have peace. All right, this is Gardner Israel calling the lost sheep.